Right, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be playing a game called Pumpkin Jack. It's basically kind of like a PlayStation 1 kind of game where you go around and you're collecting items, you're killing zombies. It's a good Halloween game. So, you know, I thought I'd keep it the Halloween theme. So let's go ahead and load it up and see. Start our journey, shall we? Through the mis mystical land. Once upon a time, in the great Arkansil Kingdom, the world lived in peace and coexistence between the humans, the animals, the birds, even the cute little bunny rabbits. It was an age of prosperity without anything to fear of war, famine, catastrophe. It was so very boring. <laughs> so boring, in fact, that even the devil himself was bored brainless. The devil dreamed of bloodshed, pestilence, suffering on a cosmic scale. So, he devised a plan to make things in Arkansas a little more entertaining. The devil unleashed the curse of the eternal night. A powerful spell that conjured mindless, soulless, heartless monsters across the world. The monsters lay waste to every city, every home, every leaky outhouse, and backwater town in the kingdom. It was beautiful, but for some reason, the humans quite enjoyed their safe, boring little lives. They couldn't handle a few pesky monsters coming in and tearing them all limb from limb. So, they called upon the champion. Mighty wizard. A sorcerer with the skill and intellect to break the curse and usurp the devil's power. The wizard departed his luxurious tower in his studies to find the power he needed to break the curse of the eternal night. Very well. The devil said, two can play that game. And who knows, this might be the fun I've been looking for. So in response to the wizard's quest, he called upon the champion. and destroy him. Give me a second, chat. One second now. Oh, sorry about that. All right, here we go. Here we are, a hey, Mr. Pumpkinhead. So no, it's not open world. 
It's not open world. Absolutely not. All right, found out the hard way. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so next. So we can do roll, we can do jump. Okay. Double jump. Okay, double jump. Got it. I'm going to drink from a cauldron. Got it. Some heads in. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Oh. Dodging some swinging ropes. Talk to the bird. Hello? Hello, is this Michael? Yeah, speaking. It's Michael, this is Ray from our Take Performance Products. Oh, okay, hey, what's going on? Hey, got uh, some emails regarding I'd like to tell Oh, yeah, yeah, do you guys have an option to uh, to produce this? No. Oh, it's a shame. But, uh, we, we, we built electric cars before. Um, I like electric hot rods. Okay. So it's something that we can do, and, and uh, I, I, I put a call into the uh, franchise to see if they would allow us to do that, and I think that they're open to it. Oh, okay. Uh, so what would that entail? Would that entail basically just taking um, Set Bill Eleanor and then um, transferring it over to this other company to install the electric uh, motors? How would it How would it work exactly? That's, that's, that's true, yeah, that's true. I was thinking more towards um, having it just uh, bolted to the transmission, you know, with an adapter plate and um, having it run as, as front wheel drive, unless it could uh, be connected to the drive shaft for the rear, for the rear differential. I don't know if you guys could do that. Well, actually, um, the, the easiest, cheapest way is, is actually where it'd be rear wheel drive. Hmm. Um, and we would, we would just put uh, an electric motor on the front of the transmission rebuild the floor and trunk area for batteries. Interesting. Uh, you'd, lo you'd lose your back seat. Oh, I see. Yeah, because of the battery compartment and yep. yeah, the multiple battery yep. cells needed. Okay. So, I mean, it's something that we can do, but I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's not going to be something we're just going to dive into, do a big estimate on and stuff like that because you're the only one in the world that's asked for it. So if it's something you're serious about doing that you want us to put pencil to paper, I can give you a... Um, you know, a rough estimate on what I think it would cost. Sure. And after that, I'd have to have a retainer to start building it out on paper. 
Okay, yeah, I would appreciate that. So, just so you know, I mean, any electric converting that we've done so far in any of those types of cars uh, have been right around 200. Okay. Uh, but with the Eleanor package and what they're going to want for licensing uh, and all the additional Eleanor stuff, I would I would say that you, you should definitely uh, be prepared for something in the 275 to 325 range. 275 to 300 range? Okay. It's B275 to like 325, I would say. 300 is probably going to be the number, uh, but uh, I just, you know, again, it's that's a week's worth of work uh, built it on paper. Got it. Okay. So I got the numbers now, and I just need to, to figure out. So exactly, um, so there would be no exhaust system, correct? There would be, uh, like you said, no, no, no fuel tank. Um, nope. No fuel lines, obviously, no radiator. Nothing that would look like a gasoline uh, a vehicle, but it would have everything else original. Like, it would have the seats, it would have... Uh, the GT500 Chobe body kit to have the licensing with the plaque on the dash. Uh, the yep, wheels would be, the, be... The first, the first uh, licensed electric Eleanor. <laughs> yeah, it would be, yeah. Would, would it have a stamp on there saying electric Eleanor? Yeah. Yep, yep, we would have a whole new data plate and everything. It'd be the first one. Good lord, that could actually be uh, worth a lot of history. Money. Yeah. Um, well, there's there's one that we... Uh, a coupe's fastback conversion that we put together years ago and then somebody actually turned the car into an Illinois and they licensed it as a tribute and sold it to Beacon last week or two weeks ago for $349,000. Good lord, wow. Good lord, that's quite a bit of money. Yeah, so this is a good, yeah, good investment. That was just for a, it, it, it really is. There's not another car that I can build for you in this shop. Has anyone ever asked for this? Investment. Am I the first person to request this? No, we've had other people ask. Um, but when they figure that they could get one for two fifty, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, gas and traditional, that they just they do that. Uh, there's been people that have asked, uh, you know, and it's it's something that, like I said, we've done with other muscle cars. Mm -hmm. uh, we've made some electric cars before. Uh, truth be told, uh, have you heard of the Charge, the Charge Mustang? I have. Yeah. We build all their bodies. Oh, nice. So you guys do have so good collaboration then. We're, we're the ones. We're the ones that are building all the bodies for them. Gotcha, gotcha. So right now, I'm I'm located in Illinois, Chicago. My parents live in in uh, California. Um, you know, I, I know you guys are based out of California, aren't you? We're in actually we're in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So you're closer to me then. Yep. Okay. Yep. We're actually going to Illinois to pick up the Mustang Fastback that we're uh, building into an Illinois for a customer right in Chicago. Okay. Okay. So w would I have to? Uh, source out a, a fastback, or would I just simply um, have you guys source them for me? Yeah, we, we, we get it. We build, we build the body and recondition it and, and build the whole car. Okay, and, and, and so this is basically taking a, a used fastback and then reconditioning all the parts, structurally making the, the chassis, you know, safe again and all that, and basically well, yeah, from the ground up. On a car like that, on electric, I mean, we can start with a real fastback if you want, or we can just start with a coupe. We turn it into a fastback. It mm -hmm. doesn't much matter because of the nature of the car. Mm -hmm. um, if you start with a real fastback, you're going to add about 10 grand. Uh, okay. Because that's what it's going to cost us for the carcass. That makes um, sense. Yeah. Again, with this type of build, you're not going to use any of the factory sheet metal. Fiber. You're not going to use any of the fiber wall, mm -hmm. any of the floor pan, any of the trunk floor, any of the transition pan, mm -hmm. none of the frame rails. All of that stuff will be changed. Okay. Uh, so we build all of that custom underneath. Do all of our own floor pans, firewall, transition pan, trunk floor, side aprons, everything. That's amazing. Uh, what about the color wise? You said you know it's peppermint gray, but is there an option to be say like a navy blue with the same stripe oh, pattern? Yeah, we could we could change the colors and still have it be licensed. We still have it be licensed. Nice man. Yep. yep. Okay, and then um. I don't exactly have the, the $185,000 cash uh, difference. Would there be some kind of like a finance to be done to pay for the, the, the offset? There is a company that does uh, 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 financing uh, for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, uh, if you want to get a single secondary information. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I, I do have my credit unions I could use. I do have my, my bank I could use. Um, but if you guys have something that you work with, which might have some some better interest rates, I mean, I'll be I'll be open to talk to them. You know? Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I'll get I'll get that information over to you and take it, you know, get with them, make sure all the financing is going to be all good and everything. And mm -hmm. then, uh, like I said, we can, it's nothing that we can't handle. 
And, and what is required? Is it? Is, do you guys require a deposit first to show you know the the, uh, the like buyer serious? Yes. Um, if it was just a traditional card, mm -hmm. it, it's not a big deal because I know it's gone even if you don't pick it up. Oh yeah. Um, Easily. On, some, on something like this, I yeah I would require like probably um, probably half down and um, half down. The remainder of it, we would just we would bill you on a, a weekly or bi-weekly basis as the bill uh, progressed. Okay. For the work being finished. Um, but yeah, I don't want to I don't want to go out and buy all the parts uh, on our dime because I'm not really interested in really you know like Alan you know, right now. Uh, believe it or not, when I when I called the, the franchise owners, it's all about sixty seconds. Uh, the franchise owners, what was happening? It's kind of once in a lifetime. I'm not going to believe how many people have asked me for electric mustangs. Really? Why? He goes, for electric gallon works. They want electric gallon works. And I said, oh, well. He goes, well, what do you think? I said, well, we'll build one if you want me to. And he said, yeah, see if he's serious. If he is, then we'll start it off. Okay. And this would be one of one, yeah? Because it's the first one. So one of one. This is one actually one. motivating me to want to get it done a lot sooner. Um, <laughs> you know, before someone else gets yeah, on it. It would, it would have its own separate registry and everything for okay. the electric versions. That's impressive. Okay. Uh, I'll, so can you send it to my email, uh, the financing company? Yeah. Check so I can get on it. All right. I'll have to Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. So they do build electric Eleanors. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting to the game so if I do res if I do get this Eleanor built in Oklahoma this will be one of one I will be the first person to ever have a licensed gone in 60 seconds Eleanor electric mechanic slash mechanical because well, there's no gasoline but mechanical um, Eleanor and it'll be licensed and everything and it'll be the one of one it will be it will be worth an absolute fortune because this will be historic. Man, this is exciting, people. Very exciting. Alright, so what's going on here? There you go. Alright. Go ahead and continue. Alright, let's go on backwards here. Yep. This to go by. There it is. Going the right way, right? There's only one way to find out. So you use your magic powers to basically launch over to there. Now we have a weapon, we can attack. Basically, you use like, this power to launch into the enemies, and then you use this little tiny shovel right here. Okay. All right, so we're going this way. Here we go. Oh, that dodge. Right, 
So we really need to utilize those. Okay, so it's just one shot kill. There we go. Taking on these zombie pumpkin thing, whatever they are, zombie things. The problem with Jack is he doesn't have much life, so we have to be very careful. Okay. Is he done? I'm going to collect this shard. Is it a piece of a mask or something? Some cauldron, get a drink. Rejuvenate. Not bad. I'm going to do a little bit of a jumpy jumpy here. A jump. So yeah, after speaking uh, with uh, Ray out uh, out in Oklahoma, that is a serious investment, people. Um, building an electric Eleanor from uh, the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. Um, that yeah. Oof talking some big money but we are also talking some big money down the line especially if we've got the 101 the main thing is the licensing if you have the licensing rights to the vehicle then you know I'm, I'm not saying you could charge whatever you want but you could potentially you know there isn't much there's no competition out there if you know what I'm saying there's nothing to, to compare it to so people would be willing to pay for a one of one you know Probably something you'd want to hold on to though because the value usually increases the longer you hold on to things. But and of course you have to keep in mint condition of it's a no-brainer right there. Ah, so I'm gonna look over the emails. I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk to the company and see what kind of rates they offer and what kind of financing financing they offer. Obviously, the build will probably take about six months for them to complete. But. Okay, so it looks like we're putting on a new head. Oh no, we took his head off. figure out a way to maybe double stack it somehow. Pumpkin's a little short so it might need to be double stacked. If there's a will, there's a way. People. I'm probably going to struggle for a bit trying to figure this out. But I will see you guys tomorrow for part two of the uh, Pumpkin Jack. We can uh, figure out where to go from there. Alright, if you guys are new, subscribe. If you would like to see more, let me know in the comments. Um, and if you like the video, obviously like the video. But yeah, see you guys in a bit. See you tomorrow.